Hey, Lindsay. Sorry we couldn't get on a call today. Um, wanted to record a video. Hopefully this will make things as clear as they need to be for you. Um, I'm sure the actual setup of the interface and the mics wasn't too bad. Um, just the four mics. Make sure you use the XLR cable, not the USB cable. They go into the four inputs. Um, there is a gain knob on each of them. I would say dial that up to maybe three o'clock, two or three o'clock, I would estimate. And then once you start recording and you can hear um, what you guys sound like, you might have to move that up or down. Sometimes it might be too quiet or too loud. Um, <clears throat> the uh, two headphone adapters are gonna go in the, uh, the two headphone jacks there on the front. You should have a volume control knob for each of those and then they split out and then you can plug in your four headphones or three or however many you guys need. Um, and then, you know, uh, set up for the mic stand should be typical as well. Um, the confusing part in which what I wanted to go over with you was once you actually get ready to record and you need to go into GarageBand, this is where a few people have issues. So um, I'm going to walk you through making a template in GarageBand. So you're going to want to set aside a folder on your computer somewhere. Uh, like if you want to go to, let me just open finder here. Like if you want to go to your main folder or even on the desktop and just create a subfolder for almost 30 recordings, you want to keep, you're going to keep everything in this one spot. So I'll just do this as an example. This screen will not show up for you. Don't worry about that. All right, so you will see this right away. And what we're gonna do is actually make an empty project, which is what should be highlighted already. So we'll double click that. Um, looks like they changed this slightly. Uh, so we're gonna click on the microphone. So when you have this screen open, there's a few things that you wanna check. Um, the first thing is down here, these two options on the bottom. Um, this is choosing what audio device is uh, going to be used to record and yours should say focus right or it should say scarlet or something to that effect um, It if you click the arrow it will pop open this extra window for the output device and the input device You want them to match um, So mine for example is Motu Traveler <clears throat> Is the name of my interface that I have so yours like I said will say either focus right or scarlet um, and you need to make sure that that's selected for both. Then you can close that window. And then you should see it reflected here. It should read uh, for both of those. Um, we're going to click this button here. I want to hear my instrument as I play and record. Make sure that's selected. And input one for the input option. Now this may show up. You may see some that have input one and two combined like this. And then an also an option for input one and in input two separately. Make sure you include, uh, excuse me, make sure you choose the ones that are separate. This means it's a mono track. This is how we want to record. So you should just see one input, one single input, and that single circle for each new track that we're going to make. And then click create. Um, I had an extra one in here. I'll delete that. So we just have one. And click the plus sign. And we're going to do the same thing with inputs two, same settings uh, for everything else, just changing the input to input two, input three, and then finally input four. Um, one other thing to check is if you right click on any of these tracks, go down to configure track header, uh, configure track header, that button that I just hit, and make sure you have the record enable button selected here. This will determine whether or not your uh, GarageBand is actually going to record. So you definitely want to be able to see that. Uh, so make sure that's highlighted and then we can back out of there. And then we can name these. So if you are going to be uh, recording, if you and Krista are going to have the same mics every time, let's say we can do Lindsay here, Krista, guest one and guest two. Boom. Now, if you are not, here's, here's the difference here too. If you're not using headphones, we have a mute button here and you want to actually mute your tracks 
Otherwise, they will be coming through your computer and then going back into the mic and it will have feedback. So if you're not using headphones, make sure everything's muted. Uh, if you are, obviously unmute those. And then for every single track, we have this record enable and this monitoring button. And you want to make sure that the, so it's red and the orange are highlighted for every single track. So before you hit record, if these red things aren't flashing here, that means it's not going to actually record. Even if you hear it, it might not actually record. So just make sure those four are highlighted. Um, you can click this button just to close that little window. You don't need to look at that. Okay, so now here your template is set up and it's good to go. So we're going to save this. And I'd love if I could just send this to you. But with your different audio device, it might change things a little bit. And I just want it to be correct from the get-go. So we're going to make this Almost 30 podcast template. Now, you never, ever want to record in this template. What you want to do now that it's set up the right way is open this. And then every new episode, you just save as... And then we're just going to say, you just name it as your guest name like you normally do. Or if you want, you can put the, you can start putting the episode numbers on there if you want to. Whatever style you want to do it is fine. Just always remember to save as. Um, you don't want to record in the template because then every new episode, it's going to add more and more um, audio files in there when it records. And all of a sudden you're going to end up with like a 50 gigabyte file, which is just outrageous. So always save as. Um, and you're good. This is the template. You shouldn't have to do anything else, but I do want to walk you through one setup thing where if if you're noticing that something is not recording the right way, this is most likely what the problem is going to be. Now, if you unplug and plug the Focusrite back in while GarageBand is open, sometimes it won't recognize the Focusrite when you plug it back in. Sometimes it will. It's slightly finicky, so you always want to double check. Um, so when you open your template, if something isn't right, if you look down here, without without opening this new window like we had to do every time, if you look down here, it's showing you what input this track is set to. So right now it's mono. It's on track one of my interface. So basically every track you should see a different input number down here. So we have number one. And then as I move down these tracks here, Krista is number two. Then we have a guest track on number three and a guest track on number four. So those should always line up um, numerical order. And if you want to make it easy, sorry, you can put the track numbers here, if that would help. Whatever is gonna make it easiest for you. Basically, I don't want you stressing out. This is the one, the one drawback of having equipment at your place. I don't want you stressing out about making sure the equipment is not right and having it, you know, compromise the recording. So whatever you need to do to make the template, just, you know, open it and hit record, whatever, whatever is easiest, we'll, we'll do that. So yeah, like I said, if, if there's any issues, just pop down here and check where these inputs are set to. Um, and then the last thing that you'll need to adjust and maybe you could do before your next episode, if you could do a test recording or something with Krista, maybe do the ads or something like that on the new equipment. Um, the gain knob that's on the front of, let me just pull this open. Focus right, 1898. Here you go. So yeah, so these gain knobs that are right here. Um, like I said, it should be fine about three or four o'clock. You don't want to go all the way to 10. Um, but the good thing about those mics is that they don't they're not hypersensitive, so they don't pick up a lot of background noise, but that means you need to make sure the gain is at a, at a good level. Because if it's too low and then we have to crank it up in post, it, it adds some noise, it's not the cleanest thing. So yeah, I would say put them all at three, try from there. Um, so you can see how this one is lit up red. If you ever see orange or red on this ring, it means it's too loud. Um, you probably will see orange sometimes when you're recording, like if you guys are laughing or something gets really loud, that's okay if it's just once in a while, but your steady talking voice should be lit up green just like this. Um, here, the monitor you shouldn't have to worry about because you're not plugging into speakers. You have the knobs here are for the volume control for the headphones. And there's the jacks that I mentioned earlier. You may need to turn on this button here that says 48 volt. This is called Phantom Power, and I cannot remember because I use that those mics, I use them when they're USB, so it's slightly different. 
Um, I can't remember if these need to be turned on or not. Basically, it's just feeding power to the mic. So plug the mics in, and if they're not working, if they're not having signal, then click this and you should be fine. Um, there is an on and off switch on the mic. Those need to be on as well. I would recommend just turning that on. If you need to use the 48 volt, push that in and just leave it set. Don't have to change anything else. Your guest won't have to fin um, you know, mess with the mic and you you'll be good to go. Uh, the back of this thing, you have the power. Um, you don't need to worry about these inputs here. Here's the USB, here's the power supply turning it on and off obviously is right here. Um, if you want, so monitor output is to go to speakers. It's up to you. Um, I assume that you'll be recording mostly with headphones, but if for some reason you wanted to set speakers up on your guest or excuse me, on your desk, um, for when you're not recording, but you want to be able to listen to music out of this or something like that, that's what these would be for. Uh, like I mentioned, you don't need to worry about that for the headphones because you have a specified headphone jack up front. So most important things to remember, um, make sure each track is labeled numerically. So one, and then make sure the input setting down here is one as well. Uh, by the way, if for some reason this block down here disappears, sometimes it may go away and then you'll be freaking out. Uh, if you double click on the track, it will bring this open. And if it looks like this for some reason, click this track button over here. So make sure it's highlighted on the track. Um, and then again, double click on one of these tracks over here to bring it back or to get rid of it altogether. Oh, I guess I did forget to say the most important thing. Uh, when you're ready to record, just hit R on the keyboard and it will start rolling. It'll give you a little pre-roll and then it will start. And then um, as you're going, I don't know what you guys normally see when you're in the studio, but yeah, this is an easy way to, to see when you're recording, if you're getting signal or not. And if it's, if it's too quiet, like if it's, if the signal that you're getting is like this, that's probably a little too low and you might want to crank the gain up. And then you can obviously see tracks two, three, and four are nothing because I have no mics plugged in. So if you see nothing, you know, when you plug everything in, have your guest do a little bit of a mic check. If you guys all have headphones on, you should be able to hear each other. You can adjust the gain, make sure your guests are cool with their levels and everything. Um, and if you see nothing, that is a cue that maybe the mic's not plugged in or the gain is too low or that button, the 48 volt button needs to be turned on. All those things are, are things to check. So this should help um, as you're getting set up. If you have any questions, um, ping me or Hayden in Slack. We would should be able to, through text, get that figured out for you. If we cannot take a call for some reason, we could probably uh, just figure it out anyways. Because like I said, the issues are usually the same for everybody. Uh, and it's usually just not having this set or not having the red record buttons checked. So, um, all right, hope that helps. Uh, let us know and good luck.